time. And very early on, I discovered that my two hobbies, which are hiking and maps, are just a perfect match, and you can perfectly do them together. So early on in the OSM days, uh, I started mapping hiking routes, and then there wasn't a map, so I did one for myself, which then I thought, well, if I do it for Switzerland, where I was then, I might as well do it for the whole planet. And this is when Waymark Trails was uh, created. Um, when I started this, there was really a few hiking trails only in Europe, but then it grew uh, over the years and I could watch this while maintaining the site. And it was really interesting to see that people got more interested in doing hiking trails for their own countries. And what I saw is that the growth was really organic. So people looked what was going on in their country and started adding things. And maybe often so that it showed up on my map, maybe not. But in a way, yes. So over the years, I thought, let's have a look at what has happened and what are we actually mapping, what's on the ground. Uh, and from this, also from a point of view of me uh, being a map maker, can we maybe do some things better in the tagging? So I'm going to... Oh, yeah. One disclaimer. This is about hiking routes. So that's a little... Uh, the routes where you have these little markings which you have to follow. It is not about hikeability of ways. There has been a lot of discussion in the community about the difficulty of a trail and what are the properties of the surface and so on. Uh, that's for another talk. That's not me. So what I want to do is have a look at a selected places in Europe, how the hiking uh, systems work there, and from there go to the OSM tagging. The selection is highly subjective. It's places I know because uh, there I really can tell you stuff about. First example uh, I want to start with is the Czech Republic. So they have a route system basically in their country. Um, so this is the very first route that was created, um, I think in the early 19 something. Um, really routes which follow nice paths for the, uh, for the touristic hiker. And this was done by a national club. So it's organized over all the country the same way. And it has grown from this first route nowadays uh, to a route network of 40,000 kilometers, which looks like this. So it's really now covering all the country. So it's touristic routes, but you really have a network of pedestrian ways going through the countries. The tagging is really, or the uh, way marking is really nice. You have three colors, uh, four colors, sorry, um, which they use. Normally, uh, you get the, the stripe as a symbol, and then the program in, uh, in me loves this. You have a couple of uh, other symbols which clearly tell you, oh, this is a detour to a mountain peak or to a spring or to a site, a touristic site. Really all nicely uh, organized. Um, if you want to hear more about this, um, Mappy, she said, will have a talk uh, on Sunday and you can know a bit what they are doing. Completely different example, the Netherlands. So they also realized we want to have a pedestrian network, a way so pedestrian can work from any A to any B. And they said, well, then we don't need routes. What we do is we put a number on every single crossroad we have, and then we mark the ways in between there. So that's the node networks. In OSM, we are doing this with the same mechanism of route relations. So this is called not punkte, and you have these nice little... Uh, a stamp there which tell you, okay, I'm at this number, uh, uh, crossroad number like this, and to get to the next number is uh, go right or go left or whatever. So if you plan your route, what you say is, oh, I'm going 24, 18, 16, 17, and then you just follow that. It's a nice system as well. The interesting thing is they realize, yeah, that's nice. Now we have a pedestrian network, but we also want to have touristic routes. And they started to put this on top of this network by having colored routes again. Uh, basically, the, the arrows which uh, go through are on these little uh, uh, guideposts you saw. They get a color and then you can follow this for a little stroll around the country like here. Um, my next example is Switzerland because it stands a little bit between those two. Um, so Switzerland, again, early on, they said, we want to have a pedestrian network over the entire country. Um, Again, it's, I think it's even managed by the state here. There are rule books which are really thick. Uh, I looked into them, very interesting. And 
what they have said is, ah, we don't have roots, we don't have these uh, nodes really, we are ordering our, uh, our ways by how difficult they are to walk. So you have yellow marking, which is easy walking for anybody, uh, red one, which is more mountain uh, hiking, uh, more difficult, and the blue one, which really you need a little bit of uh, training for. The problem with this is, um, so this is not really a node network as we saw in, in the Netherlands. What we have in Switzerland is we have guideposts. They are actually named. And where the guidepost points to, generally you have guideposts with exactly that name uh, somewhere on the other side. The problem is there's not a named guidepost in every single crossroad. So we can't really map it like the Netherlands do with between two crossroads, we have exactly one uh, relation. And there's a big fight in Switzerland how to do this. Is this a node network going from one guidepost to the other or is it actually something else? Um, so we've never talked about this uh, in between and there's a little bit of mix now in the mapping in Switzerland, uh, which is sometimes problematic. Again, Switzerland, they have said we have our base network and realized, oh, on top of this, we want these touristic routes where people can go through the entire country. So they put this on top of the base network. Um, and this is again nicely ordered. We have national routes, we have regional routes, which I think is the only country where our mapping I'm going to talk about of networks really fits. Um, the interesting part to note here is um, these touristic routes, which are on top, they don't really have their own way marking. They use the way marking of the network. And only when you come to a guidepost, it tells you, oh, now you, news, uh, you go please right or left or whatever for if you follow this larger touristic route. Um, so after we've seen these three countries, which are nice and orderly and organized on a national level, we come to Germany, which I call the land of thousand operators, and it's a total mess. So uh, in Germany, it's organized that you have uh, an oper a local operator, a tourist uh, grab, uh, club or a hiking club or the municipality doing this. Everybody's doing something different. Everybody's doing different way marking. And just to show you how this then looks like. So if you start in the east, this is really close to the Czech border. And you see, oh yeah, that's influenced by the Czech system. We have these colors, but you already see, oh, there's other symbols coming in, like the dot. And you go a bit further east and you're in Franconia, uh, in Franconia and you see, if it's worth doing, it's totally worth overdoing. So they have a massive amount of routes. They use all the symbols in the world. You can uh, possibly imagine all the colors. And I don't know, it's the best idea. What you end up with is this artwork on uh, trees sometimes with six, seven routes, uh, different markings, all going in different direction. And it's really hard to uh, understand this. The thing is, uh, in the, lately, uh, the tourist club have realized this. So they started going to a more orderly system. So for example, the uh, Hearts Tourist Club, they decided we go for numbered routes. The thing is, uh, so I randomly clicked on the route and then I looked at it, you see uh, the yellow stuff. It doesn't really look like a linear route. I have no idea what they're doing. Um, further south, they realized, okay, the Swiss are probably doing it right. Uh, in the Black Forest, they are now switching to a Swiss system as well. But what I want to say is, so this is really kind of very different systems. And if we get the tagging right in Germany, probably the rest of the world is easy. Yeah, so that's the uh, examples I wanted to show explicitly. Um, so other countries in uh, Europe uh, also are not that well mapped as these countries I showed. Uh, just to give you a few examples. So France has uh, local routes plus a system of long distance routes called Randonnée. Uh, they're slowly appearing because there is a trademark problem with the tourist club. Italy, Austria has a system, uh, again, uh, after diff uh, difficulty uh, of numbered routes. Uh, if you want to learn about this, at 12 o'clock, there's a talk by the uh, Italian uh, Alpine Club. Uh, Belgium also has a note network and the Grand Ronde on top, if I saw this correctly. The UK is a little bit interesting because they have a traditional system of rights of way. So they, uh, probably the longest in Europe, uh, have a traditional system of a pedestrian network and they build their uh, routes on top of this. 
what you always have in Europe is these small uh, circuits around villages or something where municipality just do what they want. And what we also have in Europe uh, on top of all this are the pilgrim routes. And this is really unclear to me how this works. I mean, you see, here's one example of the saint Martin de Tours. It's, again, not really a, a linear route. They're really widespread, so I think we have... I haven't counted them, but there must be a dozen, a dozen of these widespread network routes uh, that we're mapping with the same thing, and it's not really clear to me how this works. Okay, so this is a very quick overview over uh, the state in Europe. So, what does it look like in OSM? So I hope uh, from the examples I've gave, you've already realized that I'm trying to get to a point where we actually have two different things we are mapping with uh, route hiking relation. One are these touristic routes, which you're really supposed to follow from beginning to end. That's the idea there. And the other one is where they evolved into a pedestrian traffic network. The same we are doing with the highway tag, only for pedestrians. And there's these two kinds, the real ones uh, with the node network and the ones which kind of are uh, implicitly created from the routes. And you might have an argument, hmm, should we map them differently? But essentially, they are the same infrastructure. So that's, I think, why we ended up using uh, route relations for both of them. So let's have a quick look at the tagging, what we're using. There are not too many tags in, uh, in use. So these are the ones um, where more than 10% of routes are using them. Uh, just a quick overview. Uh, I'm going to go into details for the most important ones. So first one, the classification. So this is the network tag, uh, where early on we got the idea we classify by international, national, regional, local. The problem with this is it's not really working because almost no country has a classification like this. So people just come up with their own classification, uh, what they want to use. And Germany is a very good example. You see there in the Ruhr region uh, around Köln, Düsseldorf, um, they just decided, oh, we are all national routes, and they're clearly not. They're not uh, over Germany. Uh, others do it differently. So this is really a problem. It's also a problem for me as a map maker because I'm using this information to know at which zoom level to display the different routes, and this is not looking really good. So we already took one of the networks out. That's the node networks. Though there is a new tech network type node network for those. But maybe we have to look also at the other network tags. So one possibility would be to clean up the use to have a better definition. So we have something which is almost the same in the world, but I don't know if it works really. The other question is, should we find other classifications which help somebody who's making maps to make a decision what are the important uh, routes? For example, I could just use the distance, have a kind of a function like the pilgrimage, uh, taking them out or something like this. If you have ideas, I'm interested. Next one, the difficult problem of naming. So, in theory, it's nicely defined in the wiki. The name should be the name of the root that's given, and the ref should be the ref that's given. In practice, it doesn't work like this. So, that's just some examples I to, uh, I'm showing you. Recreational routes, it's working a little bit better, but even there you see creeping in text like, oh, from where to where does the root go? Uh, what is the reference, in which uh, part of the world is it, and so on. For root networks, it fails completely, because they never have a name. And there's a good reason to do this. For the naming, it's mostly taking for the editor. And our editors all have these lists of relations where you have to find your relation, and you need something to find it out, and you, people use the name to find their uh, hiking relation again. What is less known is that we have a similar problem with ref references, with the ref tag. And there, I think Waymark Trails is at fault because it's using ref to create these little la uh, labels on the map. And people wanted to have a, a decent label, of course. So they just put ref, they come up with something which looks good in the map, and yeah, then we have a problem. Again, it's a good use case, um, but yeah, maybe we should think about... Um, if you have these use cases, just support them. So instead of putting everything in the name, please, first of all, use the dedicated text we have. All the things which are put in names, we have text already for them. From to, we have the symbol, description, whatever. 
And the other question is where we have to talk about, should we have a name for the editor and the renderer when it's a lazy renderer and just wants to show something? So maybe we should introduce something like a display name, a display ref or anything. Then for the signage, uh, so we have different uh, tags to say, okay, what is the way marking for the different routes? Um, the interesting thing here is from uh, my point of a map maker, I'm not really sure what's in this tag. So there are different things that this might be. So it might be really the symbol you see on the trees uh, which you follow, so the way marking of the route. Uh, it may be, uh, it's really the symbol of the route, uh, as I said in the Switzerland example, where we have the, uh, the long distance route going on top of the, um, of the base network. Um, so there it's actually the, the other symbol, that's the symbol of the route. And sometimes, again, people put something in there so it looks pretty on the map. Um, so, again, maybe it's something we should talk about. Split the text up, say, okay, there's different uh, things. There's the way marking to follow. There's the, um, the symbol of the root itself. Uh, extend this a little bit. This is the tagging of the relation itself. Uh, let's talk quickly about uh, what do we put into our relation? What are the members? And this has also been a slowly ongoing discussion. I mean, obviously, the path where you walk along, this should go in the relation. Uh, also, alternative paths, uh, access is excursion. We basically solve the problem. I'm not going to talk about this. And then there is additional information where there's, well, ongoing discussion. So stations, stations of the nature land of trail. You could say, okay, this is essential to the trail. That belongs to the route. Similar check-in points. Yeah, maybe. Guidepost, it's getting difficult. I mean, the guidepost, they ex exist still if you just uh, delete the route. So, hmm, maybe not. And then people at some point started in putting things in like sites and accommodation where I say, no, please, don't. We are a geographic database. If I want to have an accommodation near the route, I can do this. And... The final thing I want to talk about are root sections. You've already seen this in the naming. So we do uh, a lot of splitting up of uh, hiking routes simply because they're getting too long. So we have European international trails, which would have probably thousands of members. Um, also, some of the routes do really have sections, official ones. And what you can also do if you split this up is really reuse relations and kind of express the, the notion that this long distance route is using the base network. Problem with this is at the moment there is no difference between the tagging. So as a map maker, I have to decide, oh, is this a relation on its own or does it belong to a super relation? Not quite clear. The naming problem I've already mentioned. And then there is a problem in actually implementing this that it would be nice. Uh, so we have been using super relations for this relations within relations, which is a pain to use uh, when you're processing the, processing the data. So it would be kind of nice that whatever scheme we come up with is usable with both. With Waymark Trails, which is doing the super relations, uh, can uh, work with them perfectly fine, but also with simpler renderers who just want to look at the relations and be done with it. And there I want to uh, advertise a little bit uh, for a proposal by uh, Nadia, a German user, who hopefully is going to put it out in the next weeks about mapping of sections. So that we have a new tag uh, called segments where we know, okay, this is not a full relation, this is uh, a full hiking route. This is a segment of a hiking route. And then also have special tags to say, okay, this is, refers to the hiking route, the global one, which is a section of, or this is a tag which really refers to the section. And this would ex be extremely helpful to distinguish the two and have a better map. Uh, oh. Okay. So these are the things I have been uh, noticing in the taking of high, uh, hiking routes. So just to summarize the routing classification, the names, the signage, and the sections, we should talk about this. I've totally left out node networks because this is a huge topic on its own, uh, which needs to be discussed. And I want to invite you 
to talk about this. So there will be at 3.30, uh, there will be a section in the Columbus room, uh, uh, Birds of Feather. And please come there, talk about your country, um, talk about the things you're having problem with or what works well, and maybe we can come to a better technique. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarah Hoffmann, for this very interesting and inspiring talk. And now I would like to remind everyone that if you would like to attend a different talk in a different room, uh, you have to be running soon because it's already half past and the other talks might be on time. So just in case uh, you were planning to attend a talk in a different room. Uh, we're going to do the questions now. So. Yeah. Uh, if there are any questions from the live audience, we're happy to take them now. And I already see one hand. I still have this throwing microphone, so don't worry. Someone will catch it for you if you w if you want. Good. So do I speak? Speak on. Yeah. It's going to work. Okay. So. Uh, um, just to point out the very obvious, I'm kind of missing the slide that says, by the way, this applies to all recreational routes, 90% of it at least. Yes, it does. Uh, I just didn't want to make things more complicated. But yes, we have the same. I mean, Raymark Trails also shows you cycling routes, uh, MTB and all this. And yes, that's exactly the same problem. that probably deserves on, uh, talk on its own, but there is also irritating problem with people marking uh, hiking routes that are planned, completely not existing, or, on, or having uh, like free signs on distance of 100 kilometers. Yes, I left this out as well. We also have a, uh, the question of, okay, does it have to be signed in nature? Uh, we have, I mean, in, in Europe, it's fairly clear because we have all the signage. But if you go to the US, then there's very well-known long distance hiking trails, which don't have signage. We have them any, in any way. Um, so, and some, but sometimes there are routes which are just in one guidebook, which shouldn't be in there. So this is another uh, discussion to have. And yes, also the planned routes and everything. I explicitly excluded planned routes for main mark trails and People were not uh, very happy, but I want to show roads which are really existing. Okay, uh, at least uh, one person is happy, that is me, so thank you, uh, because it is quite irritating to have a map, uh, look for a trail, and then discover that it was planned five years ago by some local administration, obviously never ever implemented. <laughs> Uh, maybe you do or don't know about it, but in Belgium we have this kind of trend the last past years that we also implement virtual node networks. They are not physically on the ground, but they do exist. Should they be mapped in OSM or not? Because they are existent, but not physically there. This goes a little bit into the question also signed or not signed, right? Um, in Germany, there's also uh, some initiative by the tourism organizations to also say, no, we have the rules uh, only virtual uh, with GPX you can download. And it's based on OpenStreetMap really and everything, but we're not putting it into OpenStreetMap because it's not signed anymore. And maybe this is a similar problem. Um, I don't know, but it's, it's a good point. This, we have to discuss this, yes. Okay, thank you. And one more big applause for Sarah, please. Thank you.